Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Jim Monaco. I am fortunate to be the athletic director. I just had my corneas burnt out. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> welcome to the 2023 Pima College Aztec Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It's been a long time uh, since we had one. We were trying to figure out when, and then COVID hit, and things just kept snowballing. But I need to make sure that you understand the reason we're as good as we are right now is because of all you sitting out here now. It's, it's because of what you laid the groundwork for absolute excellence in athletics. This college prides itself on, on naming buildings of College of Excellence, and that's great but you don't get any more excellent than Pima Community College Athletics. We have a, we have a department GPA of 3.14. You bet. We've got a couple of national championships, a bunch of runners-ups, tons of All-Americans, and every single year our teams, every one of them, make playoffs and go on to nationals. That's because of what you laid the groundwork for. You bet. One thing I do want to mention, for everybody in this room, including myself, Pima College was the launching pad we needed uh, to get where we are. And 
we always are asking for donations and we have amazing sponsorships. But if anybody ever can help, this is the time to do it. Our college needs it, our kids need it, and you know the grind everybody goes through. And it's the success that we've all had because of where we started. And that's a fact, every one of us. So I want to ask you that if you have the opportunity to ever help, you have a scanning piece on your cards. There are envelopes at the back table. So please, if you ever can help, please help Pima College Athletics. We can always use it. And uh, as always, it goes to the to student athletes. Tonight, we have a very large class, obviously. And we're asking that everybody keep it down to 90 seconds. Now, I know for some it's going to be difficult, but please. <laughs> Please try. Um, there are a lot of folks, and we'd love everybody to stay at the end to see everybody get what they need and uh, have a great time. And with that, I'd like to introduce Dolores Duran Serda, who is our interim chancellor. Thank you, Jim. How's everybody doing? Doing great? Yes, let's hear that energy. Welcome everyone, bienvenidos. This is such an exciting evening and just mingling and talking to folks and meeting people, it's, it's like a reunion. Even people I hadn't seen years and years and so um, so grateful for you to be here as we support our, our Athletics Hall of Fame. It is my honor to welcome all of you to the 2023 Pima Community College Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Tonight's event caps an incredible year of accomplishments in Pima Athletics, just as uh, Director Monaco said. Last month, Pima hosted the 2023 NJCAA Division II Men's and Women's Soccer Tournaments, championships, in fact. And I went to a couple of those games. They were fun. It was the second straight year Pima was chosen to host this prestigious tournament, and teams from across the country came for national titles. In 2022-2023, Pima Athletics set the record with 11 of our 13 teams finishing with a GPA of 3.14 or better. Let's give everybody a hand of applause for that. And the NJCAA All Academic Distinction went to 74 Pima Scholar Athletes, another program record. So tonight I am proud to say that the state of Pima Athletics is strong. And that's due to Coach Monaco, the whole team, his team, for, for this, and I want to emphasize the strength of the program in 2023. It's a direct legacy of the exceptional athletes, coaches, administrators, and supporters that are being honored tonight. The women and the men who put Pima, the put wore the Pima uniform in years past, set a standard of excellence that continues through today and into the future. This is a center of excellence as well. As many of you know, this is the second Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I think the first one was back in 2013. We were hoping to do one soon after that, but then COVID hit and all of that. But that our Hall of Fame keeps growing is a testament to the impressive tradition of athletic excellence at Pima. Although I wasn't an athlete, uh, I played the clarinet, was in the marching band in high school and college, went to the University of Iowa, did get to go to the Rose Bowl and march in the parade. That was, that was my kind of Hall of Fame induction for me. <laughs> While all of our inductees are remarkable, I'd like to note the female athletes, administrators, and teams being honored tonight. Their legacy is represented in the seven women's sports teams and more than 120 women scholar athletes currently at Pima. That's something to really be proud of. So I'd like to conclude tonight with the words of Coach Jim Milkey. Do many of you remember him? Yes? Yes. 
As you know, uh, Coach Milky passed away recently, and uh, he was a member of the 2013 Hall of Fame class. He was a great cross-country track coach at Pima and also at Sunnyside, an, e an even better human being. Coach Milky's perspective on sports is worth remembering, and I'd like to quote his words. We don't think the sport is important. We think the student athlete is important. We think everything should focus on the student athlete and what helps them grow and develop. So tonight's inductees and the folks who have helped them on this journey have a lot to be proud of tonight. Pima has a lot in this community to be proud of tonight. Thank you so much and enjoy the ceremony. It's an honor to be with all of you. Thank you, Chancellor. And uh, without further ado, you want to see excellence. You're about to see a whole bunch of excellence walk across this stage. I'd like to introduce our MC for the night. Dave Silva, as you may recall, was with K-Gun 9, 28 years as a reporter, and is with the University of Arizona. So without further ado, Dave Silva. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, the lights are bright. Kind of reminds me of something. It's great to be here. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you, Dolores. Thank you, everyone, with the Pima Foundation for having me here tonight uh, to pay tribute to some of the best of the, of the best in Pima College athletic history. It is my honor to kind of guide you through this. I, there's a lot of people picking up awards tonight and Hall of Famers, and it's going to be exciting to uh, see them come up and hear the, from them as well. Before we get started, we would like to recognize the members of the 2013 Hall of Fame class. We invite those inductees and their representatives to stand from the 2013 class, if you're out there. <clears throat> And from what they're telling me, we're hoping to do this a little more often, so maybe every few years we'll be back and have the next class in a couple more years. Okay, first up, we want to thank and honor the Chapman Automotive Group with a service award. Chapman Automotive Group is a family-owned Arizona business founded in 1966, growing from its initial Chapman Chevrolet dealership in Chandler. The group now represents 16 brands. In 2005, Chapman expanded to Tucson with Chapman Honda, Chapman Acura, Chapman Volkswagen, Audi Tucson, Porsche Tucson, all situated at 22nd and Swan, and Mercedes-Benz of Tucson on Grant and Wilmot. Chapman also serves the Tucson community with two pre-owned value centers as well as two collision centers, Chapman Value Center and Chapman Collision on Speedway just west of Wilmot, and Chapman Value Center and Chapman Collision Center on Palo Verde, just south of I-10. Chapman has been a proud sponsor of Pima Athletics and Pima Community College, and has been an official sponsor for athletics since the 2019 season. Please welcome to the stage Executive Vice President Neb Jonas. <laughs> Is Neb here? Here he comes. <clears throat> you know, as a kid, I, uh, I played a little soccer, and I prayed that I'd be a great soccer player, a goal scorer, and a future Hall of Famer. Just goes to show you when you pray, you got to be specific. He only heard the Hall of Fame part. <laughs> uh, today marks a humbling moment for Chapman Automotive, Ted Chapman, our CEO, and myself, as we are honored with induction into the Hall of Fame. This recognition is not just a testament to our commitment but also a celebration of relationship that we share with Pima Community College. Chapman Automotive's involvement in supporting our athletes stems from a profound belief that sports and education have a transformative impact on our youth. It's been a privilege to witness the growth, dedication, and resilience of our student athletes, and our commitment to their holistic development is unwavering. Chapman Automotive remains dedicated to fostering and championing the athletes at Pima Community College. Our goal is to continue this impactful partnership, joining hands in celebration and contributing to a flourishing athletic community. Again, on behalf of Chapman Automotive, 
Thank you so much for the recognition. Okay. Now we move on to some of the teams and some of the athletes. We're going to start off with, we're going to go way back to the 1972 judo team. We had a judo team in 1972, and they're going to be recognized here tonight. They won the first national champions and produced the first All-Americans in Pima Community College history. So we're talking 51 years ago. Steve Owens and Danny Noli won the individual national titles in their respective weight classes and were grand champions by forfeit because the one at the national championship wanted to, no one at the, at the championships wanted to challenge them. They were so good. Most teams were allowed to take 12 student athletes as part of their team. Pima took four, including Glenn Summer and Armando Martinez. The head coach was Eli Noble. His assistant was Robert Terry. Unfortunately, head coach Noble passed away in January of 2022, but we did let him know that his team was going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. And they're the first ones we induct tonight, the 1972 judo team. <laughs> Moving on to baseball. What a great tradition we have here at Pima. We will start off with uh, Gilbert Heredia, who I've known for a long time myself. Gilbert attended Nogales High School and was on the 1981 state championship team. After graduating in 1983, he attended Pima in 1984 and 1985. He was on the team that advanced to the NJCAA Junior College World Series Championship game in 1985 in Grand Junction, and I was there. That game was kind of cool to be in Grand Junction, the only time. He attended the U of A for two years in 1986 and 87, was part of the national championship team in 86. He finished the season with a record of 16 and three. That same year was part of the USA baseball team with Coach Rich Alday as one of the coaches. Rich, of course, a legend here. Heredia was drafted in 1987 by the Giants and said he was fortunate to give up Ken Griffey Jr.'s first professional hit, which was in the minors, I guess, in Everett, Washington. He made his major league debut in 1991. He was traded to the Expos in 92, played with them until 95. He signed as a free agent with the Texas Rangers in 90, where did, did you, like everywhere? <laughs> signed with Oakland in 1998 and played until 2001. What a great career. He retired in the 2003 spring training preseason when he was with the White Sox. While in the mortgage industry, A.J. Hinch asked him to get back into baseball as player development with the Arizona Diamondbacks. And he's worked in player development now for 13 years and presently works for the Angels. Please welcome back Gil Heredia. That was outstanding, Dave. Thank you. Sorry I butchered your name earlier. The lights are bright. <laughs> um, first of all, I wanted to thank the uh, Hall of Fame committee, Coach Monaco. I don't think our GPA was uh, higher than 3.2 when we were playing, so, but we did good. Um, first of all, Ray, thank you for sending me a text on the background. Blue, blue. Um, very, very honored, grateful to be one of the uh, honorees and inductees to the Hall of Fame today. Um, my parents are sitting at home, hoping that either Hulu or Netflix will stream this <laughs> and they can watch it later, but they are very, very proud parents sitting in my, uh, at the house. I do have my wife with me, my sister, and my brother-in-law who are here representing the Heredias today. You hear stories about the foundations that all, everything said here. I have one, two quick stories, hopefully, because if they start playing the song, that means it's a little bit longer than a minute and a half. My dad asked me one afternoon when I was getting recruited from Arizona State, U of A, and all this, 
things change. Next thing we know, it, we're, we're trying to see where I would go to go to school. So my dad tells me, he says, hey, you need to dress up, wear a tie. We're going to go meet this guy named Rich all day. So we, and I, and I was so upset because it was about 115 degrees. It was a summer. And I took a recruiting trip with Rich. My dad was with me, and we, we exchanged information. And I was told I was excited that I was going to have an opportunity to pitch and uh, show my stuff here in Apima College. And after the whole meeting said, Mr. Rich Alday, Coach Alday said, you know what, Gilly? You look sharp with that tie. But you really didn't need to wear a tie. You could have worn shorts like I did. Uh, so next time you come and visit uh, and say something with a recruiting trip, don't wear a tie. But that was very impressive. We were going to have you hear anything. You didn't have to wear a tie. The one thing that I learned moving forward with my whole career and with the juncture that I am in my career in my life, Coach Alda had a very, very key foundation that he set to me. He was a friend, a mentor. He's the one that taught me that hard work, discipline will give you whatever you want in this world. And he was a true friend. I would like to recognize Norma, who is here today, and say thank you for Rich and your relationship that you've had with my, my family, for us, that kept us striving and truly truly honored to be part of, of your life. I think in closing, to be able to be a part of this distinguished group, I have to say um, thank you to everybody that put their time in and uh, excelled in this um, Hall of Fame. I want to congratulate all the inductees. I can't wait to hear Jack Howell's speech because I know he's going to tell me that I'm a great shagger when he comes over there and hits hat batting practice. Um, and I'm truly honored to have a lot of the friends that came down from Phoenix. Uh, Clarky, you're one of them, if I can see you through these lights. But thank you, everybody, for supporting Pima. Um, just to finish off, because I know it's a minute and a half, it's, it's a good day to be an Aztec. Thank you. All right, we'll move around the infield a little bit. We've got the pitcher taken care of. Now we're going to go to the third base side, to Jack Howell Jr., who's here from 1980 to 1982. He graduated from Palo Verde High School and joined the Pima baseball program for the 81 and 82 seasons. He was on the 81 team that finished fifth at the Junior College World Series in Grand Junction. Went uh, down the street to the U of A in 1983 and then went through the Arizona program and team and then signed with the California Angels in August of 83. Made his MLB debut on May 20th, 1985, so it didn't take long. He remained with the Angels organization until 1991 when he was traded to the San Diego Padres. From 92 to 95, Howell played in the Japanese Baseball League and then from 92 to 94 was with the Yakult Swallows there made two World Series appearances and was part of the 1993 World Series championship teams in Japan. In 92, he was the J Japan League uh, batting and home run champion and the MVP of that league, becoming the first American to win that award in his first season. He rejoined the Angels in 1996 and signed with the Astros in 98, and he retired in 2000 after playing professional baseball for 16 years. He's been in player development, on the player development side of the diamond now for the last 21 years and has been around professional baseball for 40 years. He managed the Tri-City Dust Devils, not sure where they are, but they're in the Northwest League. That was from 2002, uh, excuse me, 2022 to 2023, and he will serve as the Angels development staff coach in 2024. Please, let's welcome back and congratulate Jack Howell, Jr. Well, Gil already ruined one of the things I was going to say, and that is if we had that 3.1 uh, standard grade point average, I wouldn't be standing here right now, that's for sure. Uh, the other thing I want to say to Gil is, as he mentioned, uh, 
A.J. Hinch got him his first job. I was actually his field coordinator that year. It's been a long time that we've been uh, in the game of baseball. I just want to remind you that uh, now that I'll be the development staff coach, I'm now your boss again, so don't forget that. <laughs> no, thank you very much. This is a, a, a great honor. I know you talk about it's been 10 years, um, but it's uh, when I first got the call, um, I was really honored, and it's, it's just a great honor. And thank you to all those that, that put this together. Um, I think it's real, the three things that I wanted to talk about, and it's appropriate this time of year, is faith, hope, and love. I was brought up in a Christian home where uh, faith was everything. And my family um, and my friends um, always had faith in me. Um, my father, some of you know my father, know of my father. He was a star basketball player at Tucson High, went on to be a star basketball player at Arizona. And uh, he really, truly believed in me, and that was important. I'll try to get through this next part. Uh, because my mom, who's 93 years young, is here today. And uh, you talk about support. We were just talking with uh, Miss Alday, and my mom never missed a game at Pima and University of Arizona. She would have her bag with her that had water, sunflower seeds, gum, an umbrella, who knows what else she had in there, but she never missed a game. So um, people that gave a lot of faith in me, my friend Steve is here, we've been friends for years, just a lot of friends that uh, just really showed a lot of faith in me. Uh, hope. I was at Palo Verde High School as a senior at 5'6", 135 pounds. A good friend of mine, Barry Bruniken, had graduated the year before and he had went to Eastern and he kept begging Bull Hall to go take a look at this kid named Jack Howe and go follow him. I got lucky I got a chance to go down to Eastern, but when I went down there, I realized I had no chance. I was homesick. My dad had had uh, a double bypass. Um, I was really homesick, knew I didn't have a chance. And probably most importantly was that my girlfriend, who was my wife of 38 years, was also still in high school at Palo Verde, and I wanted to come home. So I quit, and I came home, uh, applied at Pima, started working out in the gym, decided I wanted to play. Walked into the coaching office down here with Rich Alday and Jim Fleming were in there and the doors were always open, players were always in there hanging out. And I walked in and I said, hey, I'd like to try out for the baseball team. And we talked about Rich Alday and Jim Fleming and what they created here in the baseball team and Rich Alday turned around and, and said, hey man, we're loaded. And they were loaded, Garrett Nago that year, probably the best player that ever played here. That was their first chance to go into a, a junior college World Series. He said, we're loaded. Um, and then uh, Jim Fleming turned and he said, uh, what's your name, kid? And I said, Jack Howell. And they said, Jack Howell, that little, sorry, mom, that little, uh, I can't say the word, but that little. <laughs> and I was standing at six feet, 195 pounds. So I had matured late and grown up. The point is, the thing about why Pima College Baseball and what Rich Alday created here is it didn't care where you come from. He didn't care your size. He didn't care anything. He was going to give people hope and he would give people a chance. And that truly, we talked about I'm starting my 40th year in pro baseball. It was that personality and this program that gave us hope and gave us a start. And so I'm very thankful for that. And then, of course, love. Um, everybody, five people has asked me, Jack, when are you going to retire? I get asked that question all the time. And I will retire when I no longer love this game. And that love was created right here at Pima College. So thank you all for everything. And mom, thank you. I love you. Uh, long time coming, brother. Thank you. Okay, Jack Howell, good job. Next up, continuing with baseball, is George Arias, who is here from 1990 to 1992. George graduated from Pueblo High School. His team captured the first, and to this day, the only state championship in program history in 1990. He went on to play for the Aztecs, and in his freshman season, showed up, and then he hit 17 home runs, setting the single season record as the Aztecs finished the season ranked number three in the first national poll. 
1992, Arias helped the Aztecs to the Junior College World Series, and he holds the JUCO World Series record with three grand slams in two games. Not bad. Drafted in the seventh round by the Angels, oh, I'm sorry, made a little stop at the U of A too. In 1993, he set the new single season home run record over there, playing at Sunset Field, he had 23 for Jerry Kindle's team. Arias was drafted in the seventh round by the Angels. A lot of Angels stories here. Made his ML debut, MLB debut in 1996. He was traded to the Padres in 97. Was part of the 1998 team that won the National League pennant and played the Yankees in the World Series. He was named the San Diego Padres Minor League Player of the Year. He played in Japan as well from 2000 to 2005. He won a World Series title with the Hanshin Tigers in 2003. He received his first gold glove and uh, also won honors playing first base as well. He retired from playing in 2006. He created the Tucson Champs Baseball Academy, an organization that helps young men develop their skills and train to be better baseball players. It's also helped over 50 young players earn college scholarships, so good job there. Six players have been drafted, and one of them just made the majors this last year, Nick Gonzalez of the Pittsburgh Pirates. George currently works with the Tokyo Giants as an international scout. Let's congratulate George Arias. <clears throat> we continue on with baseball. Jason Hockamy, 1988 to 89 and 1990 to 1991. Jason graduated from Rincon and helped the Rangers advance to the 1988 state championship game. With the Aztecs, he earned first team all-American honors and set the single season record with 17 wins, helping the 1990-91 teams advance to the, to the Region 1 championships. He was drafted by the New York Mets in the 12th round a week later. He made his Major League debut on June 2, 1994, at 23 years old. Got there fast. For the next five seasons, he accumulated 261 innings pitched in 106 games with the Mets, Kansas City, and Cleveland. He threw in relief as part of the 1997 Indians American League Championship team. He went 17 and two with AAA Buffalo in 1998 and pitched in the Japanese Professional League for the Yakult Swallows winning 20 games in two seasons. Hakami was a member of Team USA in the, 19, excuse me, in the 2005 World Cup in, Nether, in the Netherlands and made stops in the Mexican Professional Baseball League and the Puerto Rican Winter League. It's been all over. He's currently the associate head coach for Pima Aztecs baseball team, returning to the program in 2020, coaching with his brother, Ken. He's also the manager of the West Hampton Aviators, a member of the National Alliance of College Summer Baseball in New York. Please welcome and congratulate Jason Hockamy. Um, for anybody that was uh, nervous about getting up here and giving a speech, uh, mine's going to be quick, and so you don't have to worry. Um, <clears throat> um, first of all, I want to thank the committee for, you know, voting me to be in the Hall of Fame. It's a great honor. Um, I want to thank uh, Coach Alday and the rest of the coaches that were here um, when I played here for giving me a chance. Um, if I wouldn't have had that chance, I, you know, wouldn't be here. Um, I'd also like to thank my parents who are here. They uh, have been with me every, you know, every game in high school, summer ball, college. Uh, they came and watched me play pro ball. It's uh, been one of their uh, lifelong, um, I guess, journeys, watching my brother and I play baseball. Um, and other than that, I'd just like to thank my family for all being here. And uh, it's been a great ride. I love Pima College. I love coaching here with my brother. And it's, it's great to give back to Pima if you can. If you can, come out and watch. You know, we'd love to have you anytime. And, you know, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, we're going to step off the fields and the courts and the diamond for a second, and we're going to go to our Media Service Award, something kind of close to my heart, television and radio. First up, it's going to be David Scott Kelly. David, in his 16th year as a broadcaster here in Southern Arizona, he is currently the program director and afternoon talk show host at KGUB AM, Wildcat Radio 1290. His show, DK on the Sports Tip, airs Monday through Friday from 3 to 6. Kelly also hosts the local pregame and postgame shows for Arizona football and men's basketball games on the station, as well as Cumulus Media's weekly public affairs show, Tucson, in review. Prior to joining 1290 in June 2023, David spent 12 years as a TV sports anchor with KMSB, Fox 11, Cold News 13, and KVOA News Channel 4 here in Tucson. Originally landed in the old Pueblo back in the summer of 2008 to take a position with then IMG College as an anchor for the Arizona Wildcats radio network. So it's kind of come full circle. Kelly spent two plus seasons hosting the network pre and post game shows for Arizona football, men's basketball, as well as doing play by play for Arizona softball and the Wildcat baseball teams. He worked in radio and TV in his hometown of Cleveland for nine years, spending four seasons at WTAM as the beat reporter for the NFL's Cleveland Browns. He has vast experience in baseball play-by-play -play and having called games for all three levels of minor leagues with stops in Visalia, California, Bakersfield, Wilmington, North Carolina, and in Memphis. He is a 1990 broadcasting graduate of the University of Southern California and a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. I think I got that right. He and his wife Kathleen, who also works here in town at Banner Health, and his mother Jacqueline, Jacqueline reside here in Tucson. His dad, if you might remember this, football fans, Leroy Kelly, played professionally with the Browns, and he's a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Let's welcome and congratulate David Kelly. Jim was mad at me because I never told him about my dad uh, being a Pro Football Hall of Famer, and he's a football coach here. All right, 90 seconds. I just got out of TV, so I think I can do that right here. I just want to reiterate what Jim said when he first uh, started up here. Uh, support of this program is, is critical, critical. We all need to be supporting Pima College and letting people know, if you own a business in this town, if you have friends that own businesses in this town, let them know that there are two colleges here in Tucson, Arizona. University of Arizona and Pima College. And they should be supporting Pima College as much as they're supporting the University of Arizona. And this is a great partnership. I mean, uh, the other media guys that are here tonight, Damian, ha uh, Javier, as well as Greg, we can't do what we do without the cooperation of this fabulous athletic department. So I wanna thank, they're thanking me, I wanna thank Jim and Edgar before them, all the coaches, I mean, Kaz and Don and Mark and Al and Cosgrove and, and Kendra and, and Todd and Brian and Ken, uh, Rebecca, Chad, and all the support people, Shonda, Raymond, the new chancellor here, April is up here, does a great job. I mean, we can't do what we do as media people without them helping us and supporting us and letting us know the stories that they want to tell. And there have been some great ones from, you know, the Maddox brothers that played here for the football team, JJ Nakai and the great basketball players. Sydney, I covered her in high school at Palo Verde and here at Pima College. She went on to do great things at Alaska Anchorage. Jason, cheer for him from my hometown, Cleveland Indians. I mean, got a chance. I mean, all these great major leaguers and all these great uh, athletes here. Uh, some I didn't cover, Pima basketball, Pima baseball, having a chance to watch them win that region championship last year. Man, there was nothing better than having a chance to be there that day and cover that. Two soccer national championships, uh, telling stories like Maria Harush, who came from Sweden to play golf here and who's now at Colorado. Tremendous athletes, please support this athletic department. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, thanks to my wife, Kathleen, who's here today, and my mother, Jacqueline. 
88. She's a former news anchor. She set the pace for what I do in my life. Thank you so much, Mom. That's a good save. <laughs> All right. Next up is another one of my uh, f former buddies, former work colleagues, Damien Alameda. Unfortunately, Damien from Channel 13 could not be here tonight, but he is to be honored. He did send in a couple statements and wanted to say, and I quote, I never planned on staying this long, maybe a couple years, maybe three, but then three became five. Five years became 10, 10 years became 15. Tucson became home for me and my family. This, while Southern Arizona families welcomed me into their home as a member of the KLD 13 news team. They welcomed in this Los Angeles kid bestowed with the honor of telling sports stories, some of the most memorable, most powerful coming from the Pima Aztecs. It's a responsibility that's been and will continue to be my privilege. I may never have planned on staying this long, but I am grateful that I never left. So thank you to Jim, April, Ray, Shonda, and the rest of the Aztecs for this incredible accolade. So congratulations to Damien from Channel 13. <clears throat> okay, now it's time for some of the ladies, some of the women, and some of the great athletes from Pima over the last several years. We'll start off with Tia Morrison in women's basketball. 2008 to 2010. Tia graduated from Copper Canyon High School in Glendale and brought her talents, low post dominance, to the Aztecs. She won, was the program's first two-time, first team, All-American, two-time, first team, All-Conference, two-time NJCAA All-Region player. What else? That's it. She was named the Division II Player of the Week three times during her sophomore season. She averaged just 17.6 and 11 rebounds for the, in her entire career. She's second in Pima women's basketball history with 1,194 points, first with 819 assists. She helped the Aztecs earn a top five ranking in both seasons, number three in 2009. And the program just has thrived ever since. She's helped the program win back-to-back -back NCAA Region I, Division II championships, and two trips to the Division II national tournament. She transferred to UNLV, where she played for another year. Her passion is now in fitness and health, and she works with the personal trainers and philanthropists, creating charity fundraisers to help women and children in need. Please welcome back and congratulate Tia Morrison. I'm going to read off what I wrote so I can make sure I stay in that 90 seconds. Um, hello, uh, my name is Tia Morrison. I played for Pima between 2008 and 2010. Um, it's been such an honor to be back in this gym today and an honor to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, being back in the gym being, brings back so many memories. I started playing basketball in high school, mainly because I was the biggest girl in school, but Pima is where I really learned to compete and fell in love with the game. Um, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today without Coach T. He really showed me the definition of hard work and dedication, the happiness the game can bring, and the family it builds. I will forever be thankful for my experience here at Pima. I couldn't have done it without my team and definitely, th definitely without my coaches. And I can't stand up here without mentioning the great Coach Fleck. May he, may he rest in peace. Uh, the relationships I've built through this experience are some that I'll cherish forever. The leadership, the patience, the grit, and all the heart that I have started here at Pima playing ball. This moment will be something that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Thank you for all the love and support I've received from my family and friends today. Go Aztecs. We continue with uh, women's hoops. Abby Marsegan, 2008-2010. Abby graduated from Flowing Wells High School. Go Cabs! That's where my kids went. Where she was a state champion for the Caballeros. She brought her skills to the Aztecs and left an impact. It was a two-time third-team uh, Division II All-American, a two-time first-team uh, first team All-Team Region player. Just had great accolades as she played a couple of years here. She helped the Aztecs 
to two straight NJCA Region 1 Division 1 championships and a third and fifth place finish at the NCAA Division 2 NJCA Division, a lot of ends, a Division 2 national tournament. She averaged 12.4 points, 7.2 rebounds during her Pima career as the program went 56 and 14 and 38 and 8 in conference play. She went on to play at Idaho State University, appearing in 10 games during the 2011-2012 season. She lives in Phoenix and is an associate Mako product specialist at Stryker. Please welcome back and congratulate Abby Marsegan. First off, I want to thank the Hall of Fame Committee for putting on this incredible event. It's truly an honor to be here. I would also like to thank the people who are here tonight to support me, Colby, Liz, Amy, Rich, Books, my wife, Jenna, and most importantly, my parents, who played a huge part in why my two years here were so special. From hosting team dinners to traveling to every game, your support has always meant so much to me. Uh, lastly, to Coach T for giving me the opportunity to play here for you and to be an Aztec. He's so much more than a coach. He's a mentor and a leader and the best hire that Pima's had. Uh, when I committed to Pima, I believe they had only won a few games prior to coach taking over the program. So the only real expectations I had were to get to play for him and in front of my family for two more years. And at that time, that was enough for me. What I got from those two years was so much more. We started out our freshman year with, I believe, 25 people in the stands, and they were all our parents, so they were obligated to be here. Uh, and we ended our sophomore year with back-to-back -back trips to the national tournament, stands completely filled, and an unbreakable bond with my teammates and staff. During our sophomore year, at one point, we were begging Coach T to talk to whoever to try and make Pima a four-year school because we were not ready to leave. Um, while at Pima, I did grow so much as a player, but I grew so much as a person. Coach T sold a team of 18- and 19-year-old girls on this crazy dream that we could be something great. He provided us with an experience of a lifetime, taught us what hard work looks like, the power of team chemistry, and how to face adversity, and what a little belief and hope can do. I am so grateful for my two years at Pima and always proud to be an Aztec. Thank you so much. Okay, we continue with basketball, and we would honor Sydney Stallworth, 2015, 2017. Sydney came to Pima after graduating from Palo Verde High School. She committed to Pima and put together one of the most influential careers. She became a first time, first team Division II All American, a two time Division II Player of the Year, two time first team All Conference, two time first team All Region two-time Division II Player of the Week, seven-time Division II Player of the Week. That's it? <laughs> she played in 67 games as the Aztecs won a combined 51 and 16, 33 and 11 in conference play. She averaged 16 and a half points, 4.8 rebounds, and almost four assists, and two steals, and averaged 50, excuse me, 82.9% from the free throw line. Pretty good. She is third in Pima women's basketball history with 1,103 points and second with 152 career steals. Stallworth helped the team capture the Division Region 1 Division 2 championship, earn a third place finish at the Division 2 national tournament in 2016. She was named the Division 2 national all tournament team as well. After playing at Pima, she transferred to the University of Alaska Anchorage. That had to be a big switch. She played and coached out of the country and has now found her way back to Pima as an assistant coach for the women's basketball program. Let's welcome back to the gym and congratulate Sydney Stallworth. Okay. Okay. Um, this is definitely an honor. Um, one of the things I 
was thinking about when I was preparing for this speech that I did not write down was I really want all of the people who have been inducted to really like let this moment settle in. It's not every day that you get recognized for the things that you've done and the, the trials that you've had to get to where you are. And I think it's really important to let people celebrate you, you know? Um, <laughs> um, um, one of the things I also wanted to talk about is that I am a very short guard and um, when I was looking for schools coming out of high school, I had maybe one other school that was really looking at me and I can't thank Coach Todd enough for just giving me the opportunity to really showcase what I'm capable of doing. And one of the things that I think is the biggest advantage that um, Coach T brings to Pima is that he takes chances on people he gives people a chance and then that makes them fight that much harder for him. And that's really the culture of the women's basketball team and I think that's been his running culture since he's been here and I just can't thank him enough. Um, I honor you guys for being here and celebrating all the people who are being celebrated today and I, I'm just so thankful. So thank you to my family too. Congratulations coach. Next up, we've got from golf, Desiree Hong, who played here from 2015 to 2017. She graduated from Saguaro High School. She became a two-time All-American with her finishes at the Division I National Championships. She was also a two-time uh, Conference Golfer of the Year, two-time first team in the conference, two-time first team All-Region. As a freshman, she won four of the six regular season tournaments and never finished lower than third place. I'd say that's quite good. As a sophomore, she won two tournaments, tied for first in three tournaments, and never finished below second place. She transferred to the University of Arizona and found more success and was part of the 2018 NCAA championship team. She also earned all academic Pac-12 honorable mentions. So congratulations to Desiree Hong. We continue with another team to honor tonight. We're going to honor the 2018 men's soccer team. They finished the season only with 18 straight victories at the very end to capture the program's first national championship. They capped off the season by beating Barton Community College 2-1 in the title game when Hugo Kamatani scored in the 106th minute with an assist by Ricky Gordillo. The game-winning goal was featured on ESPN's top 10 list that evening. Way to go. It was the first time in program history that Pima had won the conference title, the region ch championship, the division one championship, the West District, and the NCAA, NJCAA national championship all in one year. They finished the season 26 and two. Kamatani was named the MVP of the tournament, along with Itsuki Ishihara. They were named the All-American team. Kamatani and Kasili Zawadi were selected All-Americans. Kamatani, Gordillo, and goalkeeper Nils Rott were named United Soccer Coaches All-Americans. It just goes on and on. David Cosgrove was named Division I National Coach of the tournament, and his staff with Javier Holguin, uh, Alex Rangel and Gabe Mendoza were selected the United States Coaches Junior College Division I Coaching Staff of the Year. And with that, we welcome back the 2018 men's soccer team. And, Co and Coach David Cosgrove.
Hi everyone, how's it going? My name is Alec Wen, and on behalf of me and my teammates, we are so thankful for this award. Um, now I'll just have my captain, heart and soul, and uh, All-American, Niels Roth, take you through the events that occurred during our record-breaking season. Thank you. Thanks, Alec, for the fabulous introduction. Um, I have the honor uh, to take you through um, our historic 2018 national champion season that earned us four titles. Um, it didn't start great. Uh, we came off as an overtime a loss in the first um, game that triggered a 26 uh, to one uh, winning streak for us. Um, thanks to the experience of head coach David Cosgross and the talented team behind me um, that went through winning our region, moving on to uh, the playoffs, winning also our districts that uh, ended us as a number one seed in, in the national championship stage in Daytona, Florida. Um, the national final is an epitome of how well we overcame any adversity since we found ourselves down a man and down a goal through a PK and somehow we overcame um, to turn the game around and crown ourselves as national champions. Um, the, 2000, uh, the, 20, so, excuse me, the 26 wins ties as a national record for wins by a soccer team in any season and the strong team performed, got crowned with um, like many recognitions. Um, amongst other, um, we had four All-Americans with Kaskil Savadi who played in all the 28 games um, and is, is uh, part of a stellar backline, um, as well as Ricky Cordillo who had 19 assists and 27 points. Um, Hugo Comitani, um, who is our clutch striker, who also got elected as the MVP and Player of the Year uh, because he scored 30 goals and 10 of them were game winners for us. Um, as overall team, um, we scored 89 goals. Uh, when we break that down, we scored more than three goals per game, and we only conceded half a game, uh, half a goal per game. <laughs> um, and lastly, just to mention what makes us uh, most proud is um, that we were able to compete with anybody, even though um, our teams does not have dorms, does not have like food like any, any other team at the national stage. Um, we ended seasons uh, against teams who were financial powerhouses and were stocked with um, fully international uh, squads while we were able to do so with nationals and, and regional talent that represent Tucson and the Pima region very well. Uh, which we turned into a slogan called Pima Land, and I'm very proud to have one Manny Brothers for life. Thank you. Okay, congrats to that team. We've got another soccer player to honor. We're gonna honor Min Vu, who played here from 2009 and 2010. Graduated from Rincon and started his collegiate journey at Pima in 2009. He became a two-time All-American and helped Pima to a combined record of 32, 12, and one in his two seasons. He was uh, the first two-time All-American in program history. Region 1, Player of the Year, First Team, Conference, First Team, All Region, led the conference with 44 points. He had 15 goals and 14 assists as a sophomore and 42 points as a freshman. He later transferred to Penn State where he won the 2011 Big Ten Tournament. He was the offensive most valuable player and named to the 2011 Big Ten Tournament All-Tournament Team. He played professionally with New York FC in the United States Soccer League and Phoenix Rising Football Club. Congratulations to Min Vu. And we continue, we should get Hugo to come back up. Hugo Kamatani is also being honored individually tonight. 
if not the most accomplished Pima men's soccer player in history as his accolades during the 2018 season helped guide the program, as I mentioned, to the national championship. As we mentioned earlier, he scored the golden goal in overtime and broke the single season record with 30 goals that season. He was named the All-American co coaches team. He was named number one player in the country out of 3,500 players. Just continues on and on. He was by far the best player we've had here. He finished his Pima career with 39 goals in 54 games. That's a pretty good percentage. Transferred to the University of Nebraska Omaha, where he became the Summit League's Newcomer of the Year. As a professional, he signed with Union Omaha of the U.S. League, and he's now playing for Naga World in the Cambodian Premier League. Hugo Kamatani. We continue going back to the media for a media service award for the print and the online publications. Javier Morales has worked as a sports writer in Southern Arizona since graduating from Sunnyside in 1985 and immediately began stringing for the Arizona Daily Star, reporting on high school football games. He started working towards a journalism degree at the U of A during his time at the Star. He reported for the Star for 13 years and the Arizona Republic for one year, pursuing other interests while working as a freelance writer. At the Daily Star, he covered high school sports as well as Pima. He was the beat writer for the Arizona Wildcat men's basketball team that won the 1997 National Championship. We were there. In 2010, he placed first for the Arizona Press Club Metro Sports Reporting Award category while writing for the TucsonCitizen.com. Javier and his brother Andy Morales started AllSportsTucson.com 10 years ago with a focus on the community of Tucson and all of our sports, including at the youth sports level, high school level, and Pima College in Arizona. He returned to Tucson in 2018 after living in Las Vegas for 17 years while working in retail management. He has a daughter, Mackenzie, who's a freshman at the College of Southern Nevada in Las Vegas. His family has strong bond with Pima College. His father, Hector A. Morales, Jr., was a community activist who was a close friend of Larry Toledo, Pima's first athletic director, who was so instrumental in the development of the college. Javier's brothers, Hector Morales III and Carlos Morales, earned their associate's degrees here. Morales has achieved his special education teaching certification through Pima's post-degree certification program. He previously earned a bachelor's degree in information technology at the University of Phoenix and a master's degree in graphics information technology at ASU. He is presently a special education teacher at the Freshman Academy at Sunnyside High School and is his sixth year as an educator within the Sunnyside Unified School District and eighth year overall. Please welcome and congratulate Javier Morales. I don't think I can really say much more. That, that was a lot there. But thank you very much. And thank you, Pima College. Um, Coach Monaco, thank you very much. Everybody, I, t I go to the community a lot, and a lot of people say there's not a better person for this job than Coach Monaco, and I, I agree because of his energy. Um, I want to thank my family, uh, my brother Andy, as Dave mentioned, uh, we've been together for, with All Sports Tucson, well, we've been together all our lives, but uh, for the last 10 years, allsportstucson.com, my, my sister Debbie's here, uh, my mother could event um, unfortunately couldn't make it, and my daughter is busy with fi getting finals, uh, finals time at College of Southern Nevada, so she couldn't make it, but I really want to thank her because... Um, to be with the distance and all that, to be supportive of what, what our goal is of community service and, and highlighting our community's youth. She understands how important that was to me to, to come here and, and work on that with, um, with my brother Andy. So I really want to thank my daughter Mackenzie because uh, without her, it wouldn't have been possible. Um, that, that, uh, AllSportsTweetson.com, if you guys don't know about it, because I still run across a lot of people that don't know about it, it's, it's basically a website that highlights our, our youth, uh, high school athletes, um, college, and uh, you know beyond. If they go on the pros, we, we, we uh, highlight them uh, that, that, that came from here. Um, 
as as uh, Dave mentioned, my dad was was very instrumental back in the late 60s and the early 70s in community activism, and that's when Pima College came about. So he has a, a piece of this, and my brother Hector, as he said, uh, and Carlos ha got their bachelor's. Um, I'm sorry, they're 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 um, associates here, and uh, my my brother Hector he passed away in June. Um, and he loved Pima College. He was very proud of this. I actually have his his uh, certificate here. Uh, he, you know, I was able to to keep it, and um, he's. I know he's here right now uh, with all of us, um, enjoying this. And um, you know, I don't want to take up too much more time, but I, you know, I, I've been to a lot of places when I covered at, with the Arizona Daily Star when I covered the basketball team. I went to Australia. I went to all the Pac-12. Uh, locations went to New York, went to Massachusetts. Um, you know, I've been in a lot of places, but the place that I feel most comfortable to coming to report on a, on a sporting event or on a story is right here. And I've told, I, I mean that. I'm, it's not just because I'm standing here. I really mean that because of the people involved, the coaches that welcome us, and the student athletes who were most likely overlooked by four-year schools, and they're coming here to to establish themselves, to prove themselves, all with that community focus, because there a lot of them are from Southern Arizona. So when I come here for an event, I really feel comfortable. I feel like coming home, actually. So um, this this is a tremendous honor to to be in, inducted in the Hall of Fame, and it, I, I share that with my family because of what Dave mentioned about how how much we're, Pima College means to us. So again, I want to thank everybody. Okay, good job there, Javier. Coming up next, or up next, is our friend Greg Hansen, who unfortunately cannot be here tonight, but I think everybody in town has been reading Greg, as I have for many years. He's been here since 1983, 40 years. He's covered this, the Summer Olympics, the Super Bowls, the Final Fours, the Masters, and so on. But more importantly, he's covered Tucson sports on all levels for those 40 years. As many of you know, and Greg talks about, he grew up in Logan, Utah, and graduated from Utah State, and began his journalism career at the Logan Herald Journal. He worked at the Salt Lake Tribune in Utah, the St. Petersburg Times in Florida, and then the Corvallis Gazette Times up in Oregon. He's also the chairman of the Arizona Heisman Trophy Committee. I had a chance to vote for that a few times myself. Hansen went on to say, quote, to my great pleasure, I cover Pima College baseball's historic 1985 team in the national championship game in baseball in Colorado. Later went to Orlando, Florida to cover Pima's 2004 uh, national, national championship softball victory. One of the most emotional moments was to watch Pima College grad and Hall of Famer Abdi Abdurrahman qualify for the 2000 Olympics in the 10,000 meter finals in Sacramento. Unforgettable, I've had the good fortune to write about Pima sports legends, Larry Toledo, Rich Alday, Armando Quiros, Stacey Eisen, Horacio Llamas, George Arias, Gil Heredias, and Abby Marcegan, among many others. Congratulations to Greg Hansen. We continue with track and field, and we honor Casey Pilgrim, who is here from 2013 to 2015. Casey was one of the most decorated high jumpers in Pima history. She holds the Pima record for the outdoor high jump mark at six feet, one and a quarter inches. Three-time individual national champion. Two-time indoor season one team runner-up All-American. Two-time outdoor season All-American on region one and a runner-up as the ACCAC conference champion. She also earned 10 first place finishes in the high jump during her Pima career. She placed 11th in the US Olympic trials in Hayward, Oregon. 
P uh, Pilgrim transferred to UNLV where she broke the indoor, their indoor record and outdoor season records as well in the high jump. She was named the 2015 Sportswoman of the Year at UNLV. Congratulations to Casey Pilgrim. <laughs> Brianna Rodriguez. She is a graduate of Sienega High School and showcased her skills at Pima in the long jump, becoming a multi-time champion and, and an All-American. She was a two-time outdoor season All-American, two-time indoor season All-American, and a two-time Region One individual champion. She claimed the long jump uh, outdoor national title in 2014 when it was held in Mesa. Uh, the year prior, she claimed third place in the event. She was here 2012 to 2015. She finished her career with 10 first place finishes in the long jump and set her career best of 18 feet, 11 and three quarter inches. She also competed in the, she wasn't, she was pretty busy. The 60 meters, the 100 meters, the four by 100 and the four by 400 relays. She transferred to the University of Oklahoma and competed for the Sooners in 2016 and 2017, please welcome back and congratulate Brianna Rodriguez. Hi. <laughs> um, good evening. Um, I was unaware of speeches tonight. <laughs> in good old fashion, my coach likes to tell me things late. Um, let's bring it back to nationals, huh? Where I almost forgot to make finals. <laughs> Shout out to Coach Shirley. Um, I wanna start off by expressing my deep honor and how humbled I am to be standing here before you guys to be accepting this award. Um, it's truly an honor. Um, <laughs> I wanna thank the selection committee for giving me this honor to be here and selecting me to be a part of this. Uh, I want to thank my chosen family for always being here, for always supporting me. I want to thank my sister for always holding it down. But more importantly, I want to thank my coach. Um, I give him my greatest gratitude. Uh, to be honest, if it wasn't for him, my career would have ended before it even started. Uh, I quit in high school. I didn't want to do track anymore. But he made me a promise. He told me to give it one more try, and he'd make me a national championship, make me a national champion, um, to which he kept. He never mentioned that he was going to sprinkle in me becoming a Hall of Famer as well. <laughs> um, I want to thank everyone here. I want to thank, I'm nervous. <laughs> Um, I just want to thank everyone here, but thank you, Coach Tad, for always believing in me and making this opportunity something that I could hold and cherish forever. Thank you. Okay, let's go now to football. And the coach, Jeff Skurin, 2001 to 2004. Jeff Skurin started at Pima in 1999 and began to construct the new Pima Storm football program. Their first game was played on August 25th, 2001 over at Santa Rita High School in front of 7,500 fans, I remember that night. The program made an impact in their first game defeating Defending champion, national champion, Glendale Community College, 28 to 20. Skurin built Pima into a national powerhouse, taking them to the 2004 Pilgrim's Pride Bowl Classic in Mount Pleasant, Texas, when the Storm beat number two ranked Kilgore College uh, 10 to seven and finished number four, ranked number four in the nation. They were 40 point underdogs. At the time, it was the only junior college game to be shown on national television. He finished his Pima career with a record of 26 and 17. Jeff wanted to give props to former Pima Chancellor Dobert, Dr. Robert Jensen, Dr. Joanne Rust, former president of the East Campus, Dr. Mary Redderer, and former instructor and assistant coach, Dr. Doug Holland, for all the work they did to put the football program together. 
a coaching career that spanned 50 years and over 315 victories, mainly here in Southern Arizona, Skurin takes great pride in getting student athletes recruited and graduated. Please welcome and congratulate Coach Jeff Skurin. That's a special man in my life, and uh, 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 a couple of people have mentioned some things that are very important. First of all, things like this, uh, one of the younger recipients said, never take things like this for granted, and I don't. Uh, I've been very fortunate in my career, um, starting with the fact that I've been coaching football for 50 years now, and I've been married for 53 years. <laughs> Coach. Thank you. Thank my wife. <laughs> Coach Dick Tomey once took me aside in front of his third wife and put his arm around me and says, this is why I like you so much. You found a way to make it all work. And in truth, my wife Joan is the one who made it all work. Okay? And if you... Please. And as I look on the who knows what I'm going to do next list, uh, think about all these young student athletes that are here tonight getting awards and the most important thing that we do as coaches and teachers is to give these kids opportunity and that's what Pima College Football did and I'm very disappointed that it doesn't exist anymore and in this era right now of NILs and transfer portal junior college athletics nationally are booming particularly football and I went and visited a school in San Diego two weeks ago, and they have over 1,000 people trying to get in to play two-year football, to get an opportunity. Think about the transfer portal, 1,000, over 1,100 uh, student athletes entered just for football in the first day. Many of those with eligibility left on the, on the community college level who will not get picked up. And where do they go? And what happens to their education? Think about the kids in Tucson that just want a chance. And one of the things I learned by working at Pima, and one of the things that Dr. Jensen and Joanne Rust insisted that I do when I took this job was to give kids an opportunity not to play football, but to get an education by offering them the lure of the sport. And we did that, and we graduated kids, and we got them into college. And as some of the coaches have pointed out, without scholarships, without dorms, without meals, what do you have to give? And you have two important things. You have education and you have opportunity. And right now we're missing a big hole. And yes, I'm a football coach, but as all of you have said, and as almost everyone is gonna come up to the stage and say, those are two things that I wanted to get. When I had to raise $260,000 in six weeks to make the football program work, I went to Jim Click. And I asked him when he wrote me this obnoxiously large check to help us get going. And I said, sir, thank you so much. Please teach me. Why are we doing this? And he looked at me and said, it's right here in the brochures that your college puts out. Lifetime enrollment and in, in, in income for a student athlete that graduates from a junior college is 37% higher than if they didn't graduate. He said, a lot of those people are going to stay in Tucson, and they're going to have money, and they're going to buy cars and they're gonna buy cars from Jim Click Automotive. <laughs> I'm gonna make my money back and then some. That's what a big picture think, thinker does. In this, and remember, at the time when I was at Pima, we had almost 89,000 students. Now, I want you to think about what, what the time is and where we're at right now, and the opportunity that our kids here don't get for my selected sport. And I'm heartbroken by it, I wanted to thank Jim Monaco for keeping it alive. I wanted to thank the amazing uh, Dr. Jensen, whose brainchild it was to have football. Uh, Joanne Rust, who's here tonight getting an award also, was just unbelievable and one of the best. When I, when, before I took the job, I did my research, and she is one of the most respected people in the NJCAA, any sport, any time. 
and uh, you just don't make it without some of the teachers, instructors that help us along the way, particularly those that, that chose to buy in to help these kids get educated. And you're gonna meet one of our fine young men later here tonight, and we need to create this opportunity again. So for those of you getting awards, great job, and appreciate the moment. But let's all work together to keep this going, because what Jim has established here, I, and frankly, I'm gonna brag here, I hired Coach Monaco for his first job at Pima College. And I'm very, very proud of that and what he did here tonight, and look what he's done for almost all of you, it's really great. Thank you to the committee, thank you to my people that helped me, and particularly thank you to my love of my wife, Joan, thank you. Weren't you guys just honored up at uh, in Tempe the other night, Jeff? Your team was it was the 25th anniversary of the Sabino Championship, right? Congratulations. <clears throat> speaking of football and speaking of players for Coach Skurin, next up is Mickey Pemintel. Mickey graduated from Marion Catholic High School in San Diego during his career at Pima. He recorded 10 and a half sacks and two interceptions and was part of that 2004 team that went nine and three and finished the season ranked number four in the country. He earned national, regional, and conference defensive player of the year honors. Also, he was a first team All-American, first team all WSFL, and first team all conference. He transferred to the University of California, Berkeley, where he received all Pac-10 honors academic All-American recognition, and was a Dean's List Award recipient as well. He also received Player of the Week honors on three occasions in the Pac-10. He recorded 98 career tackles. He was drafted by the Carolina Panthers in 2007, and he had stops with the Kansas City Chiefs and the Atlanta Falcons. Pimentel now lives in Temecula, California, and he works in medical sales for Stryker. Please welcome and congratulate Mickey Pimentel. different than back there so bear with me I'm very nervous thanks for or I want to thank God first and foremost for allowing me to even be in this position um, <laughs> cap it up for God um, I want to thank the committee for bringing back all these memories because uh, I'm very grateful to have like the coaches in my life the people in my life there's no way I could have done this without them. So let's give that a round of applause for them. I wanna thank my mom. Um, you guys probably don't know this, but my mom is from Cuba. She's an immigrant. My dad's from Cuba. My brother and sister were born in Cuba and she sacrificed her life to come to America for a better life. And there's no way, <laughs> if I was still in Cuba, I would be here right now. <laughs> That's a fact. God bless America. <laughs> All right, so bear with me because my mind is like scrambling because there's so many like people I have to thank. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie The Blind Side. You've heard of it though, right? Okay, that's my life. Okay, so there's a special family in Arizona named the Khalil family. So when I was a senior in high school, I was all American. Pretty good had a very bad mindset, grew up really poor, tough environment. Um, so obviously you have to survive, right? So it kind of like molds you into who you are today because anything that's in front of you, you want to conquer. You want to like go through because you have to survive. It's either you or him. So for football, it taught me a lot of lessons because it's a one-on-one -on -one game, technically, even though you're a part of a team. Um, that's also why I'm so grateful for like Coach Skern and having the faith and belief in me on getting me to where I'm at now, right? So the Khalil family took me in. I had very bad grades, even though I'm pretty smart. 
<laughs> but I didn't have the habits of like studying, you know, like learning. So they pretty much taught me how to do all that. Um, so then I ended up becoming an All-American and an academic All-American. I chose to go to Cal to prove to myself that I can get a degree from one of the most prestigious schools in the world. <laughs> Pretty amazing, okay? At the time, I didn't think I was gonna do it because in my head, I'm like, I'm just gonna go to the NFL. So, <laughs> so I did have the luxury to leave to the NFL early but I came back and got my degree, which is one of the biggest accomplishments I've ever had in my life. But now it's so surreal that I'm in front of you people, giving this speech, coming from my heart, and not feeling that nervous. <laughs> Even though five minutes ago or two minutes ago, I was really nervous. My legs were shaking, but um, I just want to thank everyone that had to play a part in my life, and I think I have a great life. <laughs> um, I have a lovely wife, been married for 10 years, so when Coach Skern says he's married for 50, we have a long way to go, babe. <laughs> um, other than that, thank you guys so much for honoring all the athletes that have been mentioned, and I really, truly appreciate it, and I love you guys with the bottom of my heart. <laughs> and a picture. <laughs>
And one more from football. It'll be Brian Hare, who played here in 2003, graduated from St. Viator High School in Arlington Heights, Illinois, and played one season for the Aztecs, where he was the wide receiver and earned national, regional, and conference offensive player of the year honors. First team, all conference and all WSFL. He transferred to Purdue University. White played for the Boilermakers. He had 25 catches for 436 yards and three more touchdowns with the Boilermakers. He, excuse me, Hare signed as a free agent with the Indianapolis Colts and after his rookie season played in the NFL Europe for the Cologne Centurions in Germany. In 2007, he became a speed trainer helping college athletes prepare for the NFL and would prepare current NFL athletes for the upcoming season. He resides in Indianapolis and is a senior, is a senior connected care account manager to Phillips. Congratulations to Brian Hare. <clears throat> Continuing on to another sport that's had a lot of success here, the 2006 softball team. They capture the program's second national championship after beating Gulf Coast Community College from Florida 3-2 in the title game in Plant City, Florida. They ran the table after going 5-0 five, five and, and scoring a total of 24 runs. Amanda Duran and Dana Alcacer were named co-MVPs for the national tournament. The team finished just 61 and 10 overall, captured the Region 1, Division 1 championship at Central Arizona, and just had so many accolades part of that team. Stacy Iveson was named the, na the National Junior College Division 1 National Coach of the Year, and her staff consisting of Rebecca Quiros, Jennifer Martinez, Candace Abrams, and Keith Martin were named the Division 1 National Coaching Staff of the Year. Uh, Dana, who I mentioned earlier, Amanda Duran, she went to the University of Nebraska. Dana went to Purdue. Cindy Duran went to the University of Arizona. Jessica McNamara, also to Arizona. Kelly Nielsen went to Marshall. They were named All-Americans, all of them. All ACC, AC Conference, and Division I players as well. All were Southern Arizona students and went on to play NCAA Division I softball. Please welcome to the stage their head coach and 2013 Hall of Famer, Stacy Iveson. This is so cool. Uh, thank you to the committee and, and everybody for putting this together. Um, it's hard to believe it's been 16 years. Um, also, I didn't know it was an option to have the players speak. Well played, Dave, like that, very good. Um, but anyway, uh, when I got the, the announcement that we were gonna be inducted into the Hall of Fame, I, I just like brought back so many memories of this team who are just an amazing group. And the coolest thing is to come back and see them um, as women and mothers and, um, you know, just successing and crush being so successful and crushing life, um, that's the coolest part of this, and knowing that they got their start here at, at Pima College. I remember sitting in all of their living rooms, recruiting them, and then wanting to, talking them into coming to play at uh, Pima College and trying to, to do something special here. So we really had a great group, and as, as Dave mentioned, oh, thanks. As Dave mentioned, um, these were all Southern Arizona players, which is really cool. I mean, I know like sometimes it's challenging, you know, when you're in a community college to try to bring in top level athletes, but I knew um, softball wasn't gonna have a problem with that because we have such tremendous history of softball talent here in Southern Arizona. And to be able to bring um, the success to Pima College and to keep so many of our talented players home was pretty cool. Um, one of the special things I'll always remember about this team was uh, beating our arch rival, Central Arizona, which was the coolest thing at their place. We had to beat them twice um, to, to go to the World Series. And um, I, there, was, there was an incident, and the head coach got ejected, but our, we handed it over to uh, our now head coach, uh, Becky Kiros and Jen Martinez and Candace, and they brought us to the to the finals, and um, 
we got the opportunity to, to go back the next day and play in the, in the championship game. We had to beat Central Arizona twice. And um, we were able to do it, which was so cool to do that on their field. And then heading to the, to the national championship was fantastic, of course, um, going, having to travel across country. But um, we, like, like Dave mentioned, we, we really kind of cruised through. I mean, considering the first championship that we had was like a battle, I mean, a real battle. And not that it wasn't a battle this time, but we, we stayed in the winner's bracket. Um, and then, of course, Dana had to make it interesting in the championship game with a one-run ball game. But, um, but it, was, it was just a really special time, and I think such a, an incredible group of athletes. And I do want to quickly um, go through and, and mention them all because they, they deserve it. Um, I'll just say their name, and you can kind of wave because you guys deserve the recognition. Dana Alcacer was our pitcher, one of our pitchers. Shannon Anderson, another pitcher. Aaliyah Lara, who's represented here by her parents tonight, Kelly Nielsen, Leticia Sylvain, Ashley Aldrich, Sabina Chavez couldn't make it tonight, Cindy Duran is here, Sila was not able to make it, Sila Fernandez, but Jessica McNamara is here, Lauren Savia came all the way from New York to come back for this, it's so cool, <laughs> Lucy Barcelo, Ashley Bryan didn't make it. Um, Chelsea Cohen is here. Amanda Duran had a terrific season for us, but was not able to be here tonight. And uh, Cynthia Solis, an another fantastic player. And then, of course, our staff, uh, Becca Kiros, like I mentioned, who is just like such an honor to uh, have her still coaching here at Pima and doing a tremendous job carrying on the tradition. Her still assistant, Jennifer Martinez, is, is here. And um, Candace Abrams, I don't think Candace made it tonight, but she was an outstanding part of our staff. And then, of course, Keith Martin, the guru who allowed us to be able to just play. He did all the other stuff so we could just show up, get there, and play the game. So again, um, just a really cool opportunity for us to all to come back together. We haven't seen each other, many of us in so many years. It's really cool. And also, one last thing is I want to thank the parents of these players. The coolest, one of the coolest things is to see all of you guys here still supporting your girls. I love it. Very cool. And then, of course, my husband, who uh, is amazing and has been there every step of the way. And he's still here with me tonight. Thanks for, for everything. I mean, thanks. Congratulations to them. Great team, great stories. Good to see them all here. Here in the basketball gym, we're going to turn our attention to men's basketball, and we're honoring Ben Murphy Gershman. He graduated from Tucson Magnet High School in 2007 and worked as a handyman for five years. One phone call between Pima coach Brian Peabody and Jerry DeLesma would turn the trajectory of Murphy's life and begin his collegiate journey. He earned second team All-American honors his sophomore year, was a two-time all-conference, two-time first team, all-region one player. Gershman posted a record of 40 double-doubles in points and rebounds, averaging, averaging 29 points and 11 rebounds in his Pima career. That's it. The Aztecs made two trips to the Region 1 Division 2 playoffs and won a total of 33 games with him on the roster, which sparked this program's turnaround. Gershman transferred to the Colorado School of Mines, where he became an NABC Honors Court member and was on the RMAC Academic Honor Roll. He got his degree in civil engineering and now resides in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Please welcome and congratulate Ben Murphy Gershman. Oh, okay. 
now. Um, all right, so just before I forget, I want to thank my wife, who's not here tonight, but got to thank her for years and years of support um, every step of the way. Um, my kids, you guys weren't around yet, but I thank you nonetheless. I love you. Um, my parents, uh, the rest of my family that's here tonight, thank you. Um, I just want to reiterate uh, something that most everybody else has talked about tonight, which is just the importance of Pima College to this community, uh, not just athletics, but academics. Um, it's given so many of us second, third, fourth chances um, to do the things that we love and to, uh, you know, to get somewhere. Uh, personally, I, I dropped out, I don't know, three or four times before I figured it out. And Pima was always there, um, ready to take me back, ready to help. There are so many people that uh, work behind the scenes in, in ensuring all of our success. You know, professors, uh, training staff, tutors, you name it. Um, they put a lot of resources and time into, uh, into all of us. Um, Coach Peabody, I have to thank you. Personally, you gave me the opportunity to come back um, and it changed my life, so thank you. Coach Todd, you're here somewhere. You were a big help along the way, believe it or not. Um, April, behind me, took care of an old man every day so that I could keep playing. Um, so that's it, thank you. <laughs> Okay, congratulations. We have one more basketball player. Dion James was here 2016-2017. Graduated from Empire High School, attended North Carolina A&T in Greensboro, North Carolina, before transferring to Pima College to play his sophomore year here. He helped lead the Aztecs to their first Region 1 Division II championship in eight years with a 102-99 victory over number one seeded Phoenix College. He was named the game's MVP after a 27.12 rebound game. The Aztecs advanced to the Elite Eight at the Division II National Tournament in Danville, Illinois, and James was named the Division II All-American team. The Aztecs finished that season 22 and 13, at the time the most single season wins for the program since the 1989-90 season. James had 20 double-doubles in points and rebounds. He was selected the 2017 Spalding Division II National Player of the Year, First Team Division II All-American, the Conference Co-Player of the Year, First Team All-Conference, First Team All-Region. It just continues. He averaged 20.6 points and over nine rebounds, three assists, and one block. He went on to sign with Colorado State University, and then he transferred to Washington State. He graduated with his master's degree from Washington State and resides in Austin, Texas. Let's congratulate Dion James. And we wrap things up with one more award, one more honoree, Dr. Joanne Rust. She served at Pima Community College from 1978 until her retirement in 2005. She coached both volleyball and basketball, leading both to regional tournament play. In 1985, she became the assistant athletic director for eligibility and developed the PASS program, which stands for Pima Athletes for Student Success. During her administrative tenure, she was instrumental in adding football and women's soccer. She was the college liaison to the city county parks and recreation and YMCA for the expansion of joint use of athletic facilities at the East Desert Vista and Northwest campuses. 
Dr. Rust held numerous regional and national athletic positions. She was Region 1 Director of Athletics and President of the Arizona Community College Athletic Conference. She was Vice President of the National Junior College Athletic Association and authored the Leaders for Life program. She was the president of the National Association of Two-Year College Athletic Administrators and was a board member of the Citizenship Through Sports Alliance and the Joint Commission on Sports Medicine. In addition to her role in athletics, Dr. Rust held other administrative positions at the college. She was Dean of Health-Related Professions, Dean of Student Development, and Dean of Instruction. After her retirement from Pima, she took a break and rested for a little bit. She worked on an athletic, as an athletic consultant. She currently resides in Tucson and enjoys her family, golf, and desert walks. Please welcome and congratulate Dr. Joanne Rust. First, I'd like to thank everyone for staying. <laughs> because it is an important evening and it has meant a lot to all of us. To be recognized by your peers is nothing better in the world because you can get many honors, but that is truly one. Thank you to the foundation for your support of Pima College education and athletic programming. Thank you, Jim and April. I know what it takes personally to put on one of these events and I truly thank all the, the effort that you put in. I'd like to thank my family for being here this evening and my special group of friends. Without you, um, I, I, these things don't happen in a vacuum. And speaking of that, um, we come to this journey interestingly. And if we don't have leaders and mentors who see something in us and push us along, we, we don't have these opportunities. And for me, it was the former athletic director, Larry Toledo, and assistant athletic director, Maureen Murphy. Their leadership gave me so many opportunities. May I thank all the athletic staffs, coaches, and the thousands of athletes. Thank you for letting me be a part of your educational and athletic journey here at Pima. I have had many honors at Pima to hold different positions here, but the one I will always hold dearest to my heart is that of having been your director of athletics. Thank you. That's, that's a wrap. I think that the show is over. Thank you so much. It was great to be part of this. Congratulations to everyone. Thanks for coming. I know Jim has a few final thoughts, but again, thanks for having me uh, do this tonight. It was great to be here and see so many friends. And congrats to everyone. Thank you very much. That was awesome. All right, we, we planned on 7.30, so I have about 50 minutes. So, uh, no, I'm not going to do any kind of like halftime thing. I won't kick over the podium or any of that stuff. Uh, I, I need to thank some people. This is a tremendous amount of work uh, to put on a, 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 something like this, to, to have it run as well as it did, to go as smooth as it did. First of all, thank you. I need to thank April Jesse, who is our head, our chair of this committee. She was amazing getting all this done with being the head athletic trainer. I need to thank Dolores, our chancellor, for giving us the support she gives us to do this. Marcy Euler and her group from the foundation. Pima Foundation has been a huge help to Pima Athletics. Chris Mayer and his staff. Chris, I told you 7.30, it's 6.46. I believe you owe me some money. Um, <laughs> With that having been said of money, thank you Chapman Automotive. Without those people, we can't do what we do. And they've been an incredible sponsor to Pima Athletics and I'll be forever grateful. What I wanna end with is this. Everybody who came up here tonight, oh, Ray Suarez, who's he? <laughs> I was gonna do him at the end, I wanted to make it wait. 
Ray Suarez handles all of our information. He comes to games, he's here at nine o'clock in the morning and sometimes at 1 a.m. he's still writing stories and he's very underappreciated but not by us. You know what I really believe makes Pima College Athletics works, and I mean this wholeheartedly, is that we love our athletes, we love our students. And to hear them come back and say how much they love their coaches, if, if that, that's better than any ring or national championship. You have professional athletes walk up here and thank their coaches for giving them a chance. You, you have men and women that have worked hard academically and athletically to achieve incredible things in their life because of Pima. And when Coach Scurran hired me and put me in a recruiting role, I never would use stepping stone. I have never believed Pima College is a stepping stone. It's a launching pad. You go wherever you want to go in this life if you've got the work and you have the opportunity, and Pima is the opportunity. Thank you all for coming tonight. I appreciate you all. Have a great holiday season. Thank you very much.